Well, hello folks, here we are again with another teeny tiny technical tutorial from No SLLC. That's me. Um, I've got a lot of people watching a lot of my videos, um, and they're all over the place in terms of interest. Um, I don't know if you'll be interested in this or not, but I got a little upset because I had um, a problem with a shower valve in my house. One of them, it was leaking. I noticed that uh, the wall behind the shower head was um, distorting slightly along the baseboard which indicated that there was some water leakage um, so I decided I better take a look at it and um, when I did that I went out on the net and tried to figure out how to do this uh, very simple repair I've repaired shower heads before but um, I found that uh, most of the stuff on the net didn't help me very much so when I finally fixed mine I said I put a couple things up here about how I did mine um, because possibly you'll have to do yours and you may have the same kind of shower uh, valve that I do which is a Price Fister shower valve. So here we go with my little adventure. Boink. This is the uh, shower valve. You can see there's a little bit of uh, discoloration here but uh, it's 10 years old. Our house is 10 years old. Um, so that's kind of to be expected, you know, water dribbles down here. And you can see I've got hard water spots all over the place. The water here in Southern California and Orange County is uh, pretty hard, but um, it didn't, doesn't look too bad. It cleans up. I just didn't have, hadn't cleaned it up when I took this photo. Um, didn't look too bad from the front, but uh, the back side of this wall, uh, as I said, there was uh, some um, dislocation in the... Um, baseboard so I said uh oh it's got to be coming from this a leak so decided to take it apart and the first way you take this particular one apart is you have to pull this little button out over here uh, which I did make sure uh, when you pull the little button out that you don't drop it down the drain because they're real hard to replace <clears throat> so you pull that out and then you put a small Phillips screwdriver in here and there's a Phillips head screw that uh, unscrews and then the whole handle assembly comes off and that leaves you with this. So the handle just fits on there and the screw screws into the center of that uh, nylon uh, shaft right there. So looking at this you can see that this is threaded right here so it's pretty obvious this this little sleeve right here has to unthread or unscrew from this plastic thing down here uh, which is of course what I did counterclockwise you unscrew it. Nope. Why is that? There we go. Uh, and it comes off. Now you can see a lot of hard water stuff here. It looks kind of grody, doesn't it? But uh, it's 10 years old. It's never been off before. So I unscrewed that uh, from the uh, chrome plate right there and that uh, results in this. And once again you can see there's no screws or anything on the chrome plate so it's pretty obvious that um, that little um, piece on this uh, sleeve is what was pushing on that chrome to hold it in. So uh, obviously this should just pull off of here so what I did was I took an exacto knife and went around here and just cut loose the um, uh, sealer that was holding it up against the wall and that lets it come off and the first thing I noticed when I pulled this off was uh, look at all the corrosion and gunkies down here this is the bottom uh, of the um, of the chrome plate as you're looking at it over here so it's this is the bottom part so it's pretty obvious that water had been collecting here for a while and you also notice there's some water spots up here well that would have been the top of this this little valve right here you know this is the little water spot area so it's pretty obvious that there was a little bit of spray coming out uh, of something back here and that uh, hit this back side of this now I know that and I know that they put this in originally when the house was built upside down because there's a tiny little cut right down here that would allow any water collecting in here to dribble out the bottom but they had it on the top and so that's partly why the water collected in here whenever this little bit of a leak would would uh, cause water to hit it you can see the water down here so the first thing I noticed is that uh, they weren't paying attention when they put this little chrome thing in you want the, the little tiny divot that's in here to be at the bottom so that any water that happens to get down behind uh, the rubber gasket or the sealer that you also have to put on when you put this back uh, the water can get out from behind there but that wasn't the big uh, problem when I uh, pulled this off and I looked inside the wall to see what kind of uh, shape the um, valve was in it looked like this 
Oh my goodness. So it's pretty obvious this has been um, seeping or leaking for quite a long time. I have no idea how long. Uh, but this kind of uh, set me back because this didn't look like anything I've ever changed out before. Uh, normally there's like a set screw or something around here and you just pull this whole mechanism out. But this obviously has a, a small metal plate right here with four of these little dog ears uh, that are holding this in. So I wasn't sure at this point because I couldn't quite see what was going on if this was a compression gasket behind here. And you can see that little bit of blue right there. And it certainly looked like this was a compression gasket back here. So um, here's a picture from a little different angle. So I was very reluctant to pull this out to take a look at it because if in fact it was a compression gasket back here, there's no way I'd be able to get this back on um, and, and have a watertight seal. Um, so I didn't do anything at that point. I said, uh oh, I better go down to the hardware store and see if I can find this funny looking little four tabbed um, steel plate right here uh, to replace this. So I couldn't find a manufacturer's name on any of this hardware, which is very odd. Um, I looked and looked and looked. I looked on the faucets because everything was put in our house at the same time. Um, couldn't find any of these things. <clears throat> so I went down to the, this big chain hardware store just down by my house and tried to find that uh, little metal uh, compression ring with the four holes in it and no joy there was nothing down there like that so I came back and uh, spent several hours looking on the net on how-to articles and that's partly why I'm doing this little video right now because I got so upset I was watching all these things looking at all these things and quite frankly most of them were just not worth the effort to put a mouse click on and worse than that was one of them ha had a video that actually did show the same kind of valve I have but the guy never ever ever said what the name of the manufacturer was so I finally uh, as I'm thinking about it I said you know someplace there has to be a name uh, of the manufacturer so I went up to one of the other showers that I had not changed the shower head out on and I found that in fact their price Fister right so that at least gave me a lead so I went up on the price Fister website uh, and found some really cool things. If you have Price Fister in your house and uh, you're the original owner or that is you put the unit in yourself, they have a lifetime warranty on this their uh, stuff. It's called the Fister Lifetime Warranty. Uh, and here's a little bit of the uh, website information on there. This is really cool. So I called their 800 number and described my problem and they sent me the parts free. It, it, um, it took two days to get here through US mail but uh, their warranty covers the stuff all over the place. Really cool. The guy was really nice. He said I know exactly what you need so he sent the thing out uh, and I got it um, within two days. So if you have Price Fister you might want to take a look at this. That's a really really cool deal. They fix the stuff for free. They guarantee it forever. So now I had the parts, um, I'm going to replace the parts so I need to turn the water off to the whole house of course. Now most of you, you'd go out here and turn the water off at the main line here where the water meter is, but I can't do that in my house. Um, I've got another shut off valve right next to the house, but I believe this one is just for the irrigation system. I have a bunch of sprinklers. Um, so I'm figuring that uh, this is the main shut off from my house right here. This is a pressure valve that feeds the whole house. So the water comes in here, goes up through the pressure regulator, and goes up to the whole house. But in my case, I have a sprinkler system, a fire sprinkler system in my house, and this box right here is dead above this one. And you can't tell if this pipe goes up here to this pipe. Um, and this presents a bit of a challenge because there's 100 pounds of uh, water pressure, street pressure, right here on this thing. So I'm thinking, okay, if this is 100 pounds, uh, and I went actually out and measured uh, my uh, pressure on all of my hose bibs, which are 60 pounds, that uh, this cannot be feeding directly into that. This has to be coming straight off the main out of the, um, uh, from the street. And the reason this is a problem is because if I um, shut the water off and then drain the, the water enough so I can work on that valve, if this pressure drops automatically the fire alarm goes off. It's a big bell on the side of my house and because I have a monitoring system 
uh, the monitoring company immediately calls the fire department. So I was a little hesitant about doing this uh, because I wasn't absolutely certain that this, this line here did not feed this one right here. So what I did was I turned the water off uh, right here and then I, I you know, just moved this valve down like this. So that shuts the water off to the house and I'm thinking not to the sprinklers. And so I, when I turned it off, then I just went outside here to the hose bib um, and let the pressure off while I was watching the meter over here because the hose bib is just behind this wall right here. So I kept watching the meter as I was letting the pressure off to the whole house and the meter stayed at 100 pounds. So it's pretty obvious that this regulates just the house and the hose bibs on the outside of the house. And this is dead off of the... Uh, uh, street main so if you have a fire alarm system in your house a sprinkler alarm system in your house you better uh, be careful if you let the pressure off because um, it will set the fire alarm off so now I could come back over here with this grody mess and uh, take these four screws out now you don't don't need to take this screw or that screw out it's a good thing too because I couldn't get them out uh, because this is just the flange to be able to line up to the same um, thickness as the wall right here so those two things stay right there you just take these four screws out and make sure that you um, uh, you, you uh, open one of the faucets here close to the shower um, because otherwise you got uh, the head pressure if you have a second story like I do uh, that's going to push you know pressurize this thing so uh, because when I unscrewed these things immediately psh, a whole bunch of water came squirting out um, so you don't want that so I unscrewed that thing and I pulled the first part of it off and then looking inside you'll see this little cartridge in here <clears throat> um, and then you can pull this little cartridge it's got these two little tabs right here that just keep it from kind of moving around but it's just in there loose um, so you remove that and the next picture here is not very clear my camera didn't focus very well but inside there it's supposed to be the, these little rubber um, o-rings here are supposed to stay with this little unit right here but after 10 years they decided they like to stick to the back of this uh, casting so make sure that you get those two little rubber uh, o-rings out of there right so you just have this uh, brass uh, casting here and then you want to go in here very carefully and make sure that this is all clean particularly this little part right here because this is where the oops, sorry this is where the pressure gasket is going to go on the new piece and this is what keeps it from leaking around the side of this um, uh, of this casting so this needs to be very very clean in here all the way around all right so here are the new new parts they sent me for free this is the little um, unit that goes in first here's the two little gaskets I told you to make sure that those those things uh, get pulled out of the old one and that they are firmly set into the new one um, and then this this here is the part obviously you can see the four little places where the screws are going to go and this is the compression ring right here it's a rubber compression ring that keeps this whole unit from leaking around the side and I'll show you the other part in here in just a bit uh, that keeps it from leaking around the shaft all right, so here's the other side of it. These things right here are going to press up against this plate right here. All right. All right, so this will go in first, and then this will go in. This back side here will go in, butt it up against that. And once again, you can see this little um, compression. It's not a gasket. It's an O-ring, like a rubber O-ring. All right, so you put that thing in first, and once again, there was no up or down on this. Um, uh, no left or right it's just a little tab right here fits in that little groove so you stick that in there making sure that the little o-rings are firmly attached in the back then you can put the front piece on this piece right here uh, you can't see very well right here but that that little rubber o-ring right there is the thing that seals up against this part of the uh, casting right here that's why this needs to be very very clean right no corrosion on it so you put this in this does have an up and down if you notice right here I've held this over sideways so you can see there's a little divot right here so that you can get it in over this little divot right here now that te technically this thing could go in almost any direction right because it's it's uh, equal distance from the four holes 
So you want to make sure that you get this in the correct way so the handle moves the right way and the hot and cold are in the right orientation. So you stick that little puppy in right there. And then because I didn't know that they weren't going to send me a new metal ring right here in the four screws, I just took the old one, which is very corroded, and scraped all the gunk off of it and then sanded the dickens out of it so that it was flat. Right, so I had a nice hard flat surface because all this really is going to do is just uh, act kind of like washers on here so it distributes the pressure evenly around that plastic um, uh, housing. So I cleaned that up so you can see it's you know, nice and flat right there. And then I put it back in with the clean flat surface pushing up against the uh, plastic uh, of this particular unit right here. And you want these up here pretty tight, right, because it's going to push that compression o-ring that's inside there so that it seals uh, seals it up so you don't get water leaking all around the edge of this all right and then I went out and turned the water back on so that I could make sure that there was no leaks here because obviously the old one that had been leaking around this shaft I don't think it was leaking so much around here it was leaking out of here spraying up against the the inside of the chrome piece and then splashing back I think that's what it was doing. All right, so I turned the water on, checked it out, make sure there was no no leaks or anything before I put the chrome piece back on. And you can see it looks pretty good. I cleaned it all up, um, you know, just scraped all of the um, uh, calcium off of it, used a little bit of cleaner, and it uh, works just fine. You know, you got to make sure that when you uh, put this up here, that you um, put uh, uh, some caulking on the uh, rubber part you know so when you push this up here and screw this in so that it squishes it up against the wall that you get a nice clean seal up here and once again this time I put it in the right way they had the little hole up here on this chrome piece the little hole belongs down here so that there is any water that gets in behind here it can drain out the bottom alright so it's a really easy fix if you have the right parts but uh, believe me it took me a little while to figure out the right parts for my price fister guaranteed for life a valve um, and then just for the terminally curious like myself I decided I was to pull this apart and see what was going on well this obviously this ring right here which goes in here was leaking after 10 years and uh, when I pulled this unit apart right here I just drilled out these rivets right here so I could pull it apart uh, I found that there's this little unit right here you can see this and it's got a little hole here and here on both sides so that one side's the hot one side's the cold and this is like a little rubber diaphragm right here well these things were so corroded that they couldn't move back and forth right inside of this little hole here this goes in there and this one goes over here and it's supposed to move freely back and forth so it kind of equalizes the hot cold pressure um, so you can see after 10 years eh, I guess that's pretty good really but uh, after 10 years it can get pretty corroded and the valve just doesn't work very well after that so kind of interesting to see the parts uh, you know how well this was engineered because it is pretty clever so there you go my price fister um, shower the next thing I've got to do is go fix the drywall <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut some of the baseboard away and the drywall away and uh, probably find some gunky mold stuff in behind the wall but uh, I haven't gotten to the point of doing that one yet um, just fixing the leak was uh, kind of entertaining. It took me a couple of days between figuring it out and ordering the parts. So there you go. I hope that helps you if you have uh, one of these um, apparently unusual price fister. They use a little bit different with that uh, compression method than the standard kind of pull the whole unit out at one shot. So 10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky over and out. I'll talk to you uh, on something else. Maybe the drywall thing. Who knows?